Good afternoon, everyone. Thought it was morning for a minute. Good to see you guys, and I'm back on Monday. Didn't post this weekend. I was just taking time to relax and enjoy, give some folks some time to join. I think this will be an interesting topic. I recently posted some videos around the pros and cons of a plant-based diet, why people fail on a plant-based diet. And I think this is a, a question I kept getting. And people are like, well, I'm this age and I'm not getting enough protein, yada, yada. I was like, you know, why don't we just answer that question? Uh, instead of just saying, trust me, I'm a doctor. <laughs> why don't we walk through the exercise of what that looks like when someone's asking me, can I get enough protein on a plant-based diet? And at the end of the day, I think the question or the answer is yes, but it depends on how you approach it. So what does that mean? Well, number one, it means that we're all individuals. We have different bodies. We have different needs. We're in different stages of our life. And we have different goals. We have different activities. So my protein needs are going to vary from the next person to the next person to the next person. Now, walking in with that attitude is primary, the best way you can approach this, right? Understanding that your protein needs are going to vary depending on who you are and where you are in life. Okay, that being said, I'm going to be speaking to the typical Jane and Joe that would come to see me. And how do we decide, first of all, what their protein intake should be? Well, first of all, we look to see, one, what chronic diseases are they having? Do they need to lose weight? Do they need to gain weight? Or do they need to maintain their current weight? And that's a very important question to ask because what is the ideal weight for someone? Let's say that someone is a 250 pounds, five foot seven female. This is not an untypical patient. They're not very active and they're struggling with type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol, and hypertension. There are medications that are also worsening, giving some side effects. This is a typical family practice patient. So how do we approach this? So, of course, I'm going to be speaking to one mindset. I really want to help people understand that they have choices and make different decisions. That's all the other videos I, read, I talk about. The next thing is, of course, I'm going to say these are the actions that will lead to better health, that will help you lose weight and feel good. But we don't focus so much on the weight loss. But the weight is an important thing to monitor because that will tell me if we're making success. Are we seeing someone being consistent in the behaviors that will help them lose weight effectively and have good energy and reverse chronic disease? So the important thing there is I don't want them to do a very restrictive diet in the sense of like 1,200 calories. You can only eat this. That is not healthy. That's not healthy for anyone's mindset. It's not long-term health. You're going to lose muscle mass. And at the end of the day, we want to maintain muscle mass and lower our fat percentage, right? We still need some fat. That is a that is how we're made in this human body. And that's a good thing. Subcutaneous fat. We want to get rid of things like visceral fat, nectopic fat, you know, fat that's stored in our muscles, fat that's in our liver that actually causes insulin resistance and things like that. So how do we even start? Sorry, you know, my nose is all running. Okay, so we look at ideal body weight. What is ideal? So let's say I'm talking about this uh, middle-aged woman who's coming with these issues, five foot seven, let's say. What I have found is that over the course of many decades of seeing many patients and measuring BMI, I understand it's not ideal factor, but it's a factor that I can use in telemedicine and such, is the closer someone gets to around a BMI of 22-ish, under 23 for sure, um, there suddenly there seems to be a switch that occurs. Now, this may happen earlier for some. I think there's some genetics involved here. But what we see in the switch is suddenly blood sugars are really better. Cholesterol is suddenly really better. Hypertension suddenly gets much better. Like there's something about that. So I think even in our normal BMI categories, we will see people who are still need 20, 30 pounds overweight uh, from their ideal. So but again, I'm just using this as a, an avatar of a typical patient and what we can use uh, to begin our general calculation of protein needs. So let's say that um, this patient, we probably want them closer to like 130, 135. I'm going to bring out my, my phone. Oh, my phone's being used. Let's say that um, we get them around 65 kilos, right? So if you take 130 pounds 
I think that's somewhere around 65 kilograms. So that's number one. Take your pounds, us Americans, we're stuck in our system of measurement. Everyone else in the world says kilograms, so our kilograms. Uh, so let's divide that weight by 2.2. That'll get your weight into kilograms. So we're going to be focusing on the ideal weight. Because if I have someone carrying around an additional 100 pounds, I don't want them eating enough protein to maintain that extra 100 pounds. That's going to be insane, right? That's insane. So we're going to start with ideal weight. So we look at the ideal weight. 65 kilograms is their ideal weight. Now, what I found is I skew kind of in the middle. The RDA, or recommended daily allowance, is 0.8 grams per kilogram, which is per 2.2 pounds. I think it's a little bit better, especially if the, given the ages that I tend to work with, if we shoot for kind of in the middle around one. Now, this is just a starting point, guys. Remember, it's just a starting point. I'm just helping you be kind of open to the idea of calculating your needs. So one gram per kilogram. So this is going to be 65 grams per day on average. That this woman will need to maintain mass, muscle mass, and get to a healthy weight, right? So just by focusing in on one, what is an ideal weight? Let's try to get that uh, protein status. And then we can talk about calories. Maybe there is, you know, Honestly, I don't even start the discussion about calories so much, but let's focus in on protein if someone's worried about that. First, I just like to get them to a plant-based diet. That's step one. Naturally, they will start to lose weight, but then we start refining. But if someone really wants to talk about it, we're going to talk about the protein. So now we're at 65 grams of protein. Someone just emailed me last night. I can't get enough of this protein. Well, we had set certain calorie requirements or requirements request. She's, she's lost some weight, but what's, what's happening, she's hitting the calorie intake, but she's sometimes 200 calories below what we were shooting for, or maybe 250, and then struggling to get that last 5, 10, 15 grams of protein. If we're, But now it's like, we're missing the point. We're missing the mark. I need you to focus in on that 2,100 calories, right? That That is the number of calories that we're looking for. That's why we're struggling to hit the mark. So, Let's say we're trying to shoot again, 65 grams of protein. Can you do this on a whole food plant-based diet? Yes. Um, so where do you start? Well, I, one of my favorite people on this earth is Brenda Davis. This is a great book. Um, she's got another book on protein, just more recent. You guys, this has got a great list. This is a great starting point, right? You can Google it. You can ask ChatGTP to help you. Um, again, I'm just pulling out some things. I pulled out some things out of my own cupboard and we're going to try and get to 65 grams on a regular diet, on a whole food plant-based diet. <clears throat> so we have 65 grams. Let's say that I'm going to make uh, some oatmeal with soy milk, a banana, and blueberries, and some a dash of pumpkin seeds. That is a good breakfast for me. I do smoothies as most mornings, but people like oatmeal. So let's just look at this grain. So... We have a quarter cup. Most people do half a cup, so I'm going to do the half cup. Grams of protein per quarter cup is five to six. Let's double that because half a cup is what I eat. And I'm, yeah, middle-aged to full one. That's 12 grams right there. Okay, so that leaves us now 53 grams to go. We have a typical soy milk. Let's say a cup of soy milk. I, mine is like eight or nine grams. Let's see if I can find it in here. Soy milk. Let's see if she even has it on here. She has a legume section here. Soy, soy milk. Six to 11 grams of protein. So let's just go in the middle and say eight. I think that's what mine has. So, and that is a cup. Perfect. So we put that in there. So eight plus, what did we decide? 12, that's 20. I only have 45 grams to go and I'm only, I'm not even full done with my breakfast yet. Moving on to the banana. Where's my banana? Banana, banana, banana. I feel like I should sing a song. Banana. So banana. Uh, banana. Sliced half a cup. That's probably half a banana, but I eat a full banana. Uh, that says 0.9 per half cup. So let's say it's a full cup. So let's say two grams. So now we're at, um, what are we at? 22 grams-ish, somewhere in there, right? Nine, 12, yep, somewhere around 22 grams. Not even done yet with breakfast, guys. Blueberries, half a cup. Okay, that's fair enough. About 0.6 grams, we'll say one gram. So now we're at 23 grams 
Still have my pumpkin seeds. Want to get in my pumpkin seeds, which are amazing, by the way, for zinc and other things. I'm just walking you through, guys, my typical breakfast. Well, we don't need to worry about this, but if you really want to know, I'm just trying to talk to you and look at the same time. Quarter cup, handful, quarter cup pumpkin seeds, literally, is what I would do. I scoop out. I have a five-pound bag of pumpkin seeds in my, in my cupboard right now. Quarter cup is a handful. 10 grams of protein. Yes, there you go. So now we're at like 30 something grams of protein just in breakfast and I'm just getting started. Okay, now let's say, so we've met over half of our protein needs just in breakfast, all whole foods, bam, bam, bam. What am I gonna eat for lunch? Lunch is gonna be, I always encourage people to consume as many legumes as possible. If you can do a cup and a half of legumes, beans, lentils a day, your body just says, thank you, thank you, thank you. So there's a few different types. You can do something like the white beans here. I just pulled these out of my cupboard, seven grams per half a cup. I don't know you, but I eat usually more of a cup per serving, but that's okay. So let's say we do, um, you do half a cup there, seven. Here's some canned soybeans, which you can get. I get mine off Amazon. Uh, 11 grams of protein, just in half a cup. Fantastic. Or some of my favorite food, I love these things, guys. If you guys haven't tried these, you must. Is Butler Curls, soy curls. This is amazing. So I, I actually had a meeting with the founder of Butler Soy Curls, tried to get him on the interview. He's like, eh, I don't deserve. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I really wanted to interview him. But anyway, so this Butler Soy Curls, yes. So their serving three quarter dry is 11 grams of protein. So let's say that we do, I don't know. Uh, we can go on average because other other beans will be a little higher. So let's say 10, 9 to 10 grams per half a cup of beans. I usually do a full cup or at least a half a cup. So half a cup to a cup. So let's say the lowest I'm going to get is 7 to 11. The most I'll get is if I did, you know, a full full cup of this is 22 grams. <laughs> It's a lot of protein. If I did a full cup of this, it's going to be 14 grams. And that's just the beans. That's not even including my starchy veggies. So let's say I do a half a cup of the white beans. Let's be on the stingy side, seven grams. And now I'm going to do my, oh man, I just lost the protein list. Now, oh, here we go. Now I'm going to do, let's say, what do you want? Sweet potato, uh, regular potato. Let's throw in a potato. Potatoes are good. Sorry, guys, I got my old lady eyes on. Potatoes, 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 potatoes. How do you say it? Potato, potato. I'm looking through here. I'm just going to decide. Um, sweet potato. That works. Cooked half a cup, two grams. So now we're up to nine, ten grams, okay? And then let's say I'm going to have a salad. Um, just a little salad. Let's just make it a side salad. Um, let's do because that breakfast is still filled me up, right? Gosh, I'm getting full just thinking about it. Um, let's pull up our salad greens. Okay, here we go. We have a few ways to look at this. Um, do you want a regular salad? Do you want salad with the nut dressing? That's going to change. You could do all sorts of stuff. So let's do, oh, goodness gracious. You could do some cabbage greens, beet greens. You could do mustard greens. All of these on average are around two grams per half a cup. Okay, so half a cup. So that's another, where are we at now? I've lost it, 12-ish. Um, plus, I always throw nuts and seeds. Nuts and seeds are your friend, guys. So let's just do another little handful. We don't even do a full pumpkin seed, but let's do, what should we do? Walnuts? Walnuts sound good. Let's do an eighth of a cup. There's another two or three grams. So now we're at what? Obviously, my brain doesn't add anything, right? So we're at 15, 16 summer grams. Added to our 30 semi grams, we're at almost what high 40s. So we need another 15, 17 grams to get to our 65 grams for the one gram per kilogram. All right, so we walk through this. We do the same thing. We go for dinner. Maybe we make a stir fry with these soy curls. Maybe we throw in some other things like other high protein foods. Our mushrooms, dude. Did you know that mushrooms? Did I say dude? I said dude. Um, mushrooms, gosh, it was it was like five or six grams per dried something. 
Hold on, let me look here. Mushroom shiitake mushrooms dry, a quarter cup. Look at this, nine grams of protein. So you make a stir fry with soy and some mushrooms and some other veggies, some maybe some, I don't know, whatever you like. It, and throw in some, again, some sesame seeds on top of that. You're going to hit your 65 grams, right? What I'm trying to say is that you can do this, right? This is just the basic stuff that I eat every day. And the important thing is that you want to focus in, one, eating enough calories to say it's a be satiating, that you have energy. But if you need to lose weight, there's some amazing foods here, but you want to eat a wide variety. Build your plate around grains, starchy vegetables, and beans and lentils, right? Then throw in these other vegetables, like I would say the non-starchy veggies to begin with, and your greens would be next. And then your fruit as an additional, it could be on top, or it could be a snack, it could be uh, some sweetness to your salad. But that is how we're going to build amazing food with plenty of protein and thrive, right? So I think we get so honed in. I'm like, am I getting enough? I need every single macro. And look at this over a course of a week. Let's average out. So maybe today you hit 63, tomorrow you hit 70. What is your average for the week? And versus like each day has to be perfect. And don't create new anxieties around our food. Our food should be meant to nourish our bodies, nourish our mind, and get us going in a life that we need to be getting busy and living instead of focus in on what am I eating for food? What do I have enough protein? You're wrong. I'm right. Blah, blah, blah. So I think, again, leave the egos at the door. Leave the gurus, the dogmas, the whatever at the door. Do what's right for your body. Make sure you're getting enough. Now, if you're a vegan bodybuilder and you're wanting to gain muscle, you're a young man, you're young woman that are doing amazing, really heavy, intense workouts, and you're doing some tr other transformations, this might be the place that maybe a plant-based protein powder would be effective because it would be difficult to eat enough of food to get sustain you to where you want to go. And that's okay too. Again, these are circumstances that are varying against people. And you can actually add in a plant-based protein powder should you choose to if that would make life easier for you. You're like, you're running out the door, Dr. Marvis. I can't eat that oatmeal, banana, pumpkin seeds, da 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 that's okay too. This There's nothing wrong with that. You're just utilizing tools that are available to you. But if most of the time you're eating a healthy whole food plant-based diet, that's fantastic. It's way better than consuming animal products in a standard American diet. You're just going to be a better healthy human for it. So I know, I never know where these are going to go. I just let the moment give me the right answers, but hopeful that that was good for you guys. Yeah, so let's just get on eating these healthy whole food plants. You're going to be fine. If you need some help, I'm here. There's other amazing doctors that are also available. You can find more of my services at drmarvis.com. I am going to be launching a workshop. Um, it's uh, all about plant-based eating, Plant 101 Masterclass. Know everything you need to know about plant-based eating. What labs? What can I be? What are my deficiencies? Could be blah, blah. All oh, those amazing questions. I'm going to answer them. Make an ebook. It's all going to be available. Join our email list. It's not out yet. Um, as far as like the, the date would be the last Thursday of this month <clears throat> at 4 p.m. Pacific time. I don't have the link up yet. Um, but uh, joining our email list, we'd be happy to there. Or you can join um, our healing kitchen. It's me and Brittany Giruti. We provide you recipes. I answer your medical questions. We meet live every Wednesday. You get to join all the workshops for free. You get the eBooks for free, all the past ones for free. Yeah, feel free to join us, guys. We're working hard to provide those services. So I hope that was helpful, and you guys rock as always. I want to say thank you, and give uh, sending love, peace, and joy your way. Thank you for spending time with me today. And yeah, have a wonderful rest of your Monday. And this means you're going to have a great and beautiful week. So I will see you guys on the flip side tomorrow.